This is King Harold Godwinson. His overconfidence cost him his life and his kingdom. He was the last Anglo-Saxon king of England, who ruled for less than a year. From January to October 1066, he faced two invasions from rival claimants to the throne, one from the Norwegian King Harald Hardrada and his own brother Tostig, and another from the Norman Duke William the Conqueror. He managed to defeat the first one, but failed to stop the second one. Why did he lose? Because he was too confident in his own abilities and did not take the necessary precautions to secure his victory. Harold's first mistake was to ignore the advice of his council, who warned him not to rush into battle with the Normans. They suggested that he should wait for reinforcements from his northern allies, who could have added a few thousand more men to his army. They also advised him to adopt a defensive strategy and let the Normans exhaust themselves in a siege or a naval blockade. Harold, however, was impatient and eager to end the Norman threat as soon as possible. He thought that he could repeat his success at the Battle of Stamford Bridge, where he had defeated the Norwegians and his brother five days before the Battle of Hastings. Harold's second mistake was to march his army south as fast as he could, without giving them enough time to rest or replenish their supplies. He covered about 250 miles in four days, a remarkable feat of endurance, but also a reckless one. His men were tired, hungry, and thirsty, and many of them had wounds that had not healed properly. He also did not send any scouts ahead to check the enemy's position or strength. He assumed that William was still at his base at Hastings, and that he could surprise him with a sudden attack. Harold's third mistake was to choose a poor location for his battle. He arrived at Senlac Hill on October 13th and decided to make his stand there. He thought that the hill would give him an advantage, as he could use his infantry to form a shield wall and repel the Norman cavalry. He also thought that the marshy ground on his flanks would protect him from being outflanked. However, he did not realize that the hill was too small and too close to the coast, and that it gave William a clear view of his movements and numbers. He also did not realize that the marshes were not as impassable as he thought, and that the Normans could use them to maneuver around his army. Harold's fourth mistake was to fight a defensive battle, instead of an offensive one. He had the numerical advantage, as he had about 7,000 men on his side. He also had the element of surprise, as William did not expect him to arrive so soon. He could have used these factors to launch a preemptive strike on the Norman camp and catch them off guard. Instead, he waited for William to attack him and gave him time to prepare and organize his army. He also gave up his mobility and allowed himself to be surrounded by the Normans. Harold's fifth and final mistake was to fall for the Norman feigned retreats, which were a common tactic in medieval warfare. Several times, the Normans pretended to flee in panic, hoping to lure the English out of their shield wall and then turn on them. This tactic worked on some occasions, especially on the flanks, where Harold's brothers Geoff and Leofwine were killed. However, the center of the shield wall, where Harold himself was, remained intact. The decisive moment came near the end of the battle, when Harold was hit by an arrow in the eye. Harold fell to the ground, mortally wounded, and was surrounded by Norman knights, who hacked him to pieces. His end broke the morale of his army, and many of them fled or surrendered. William had won the battle, and the crown of England. King Harold Godwinson was a brave and capable leader, but he was also overconfident and impulsive. He did not listen to his counsel. He did not rest his troops. He did not scout the enemy. He did not choose a good battlefield, and he did not adapt to the changing situation. He underestimated his opponent and overestimated himself. In the end, he paid the ultimate price for his overconfidence and lost everything he had.